Welcome to the Maglomaniac Let's Play, an extension of the Child's Play column that's been running on a site for ever, since we always had it. I'm Brandon Melendez. I'll be playing today. Um, as you can see, we'll be playing Mega Man X. Um, there's all of his nice specifications on the screen behind me. We've got this warning coming up. You know, I remember when I first played this game, listening to all of the clickety-clackety noises and thinking, you know, computers don't even sound like that anymore. That was back in uh, the great thing about this game is that, for me, at least it felt like a resurrection of the franchise. I hadn't really played beyond Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, I didn't really own most of the games, and I was taking this one out from Blockbuster on a regular basis, and actually my cartridge was bought used from Blockbuster, and take the label off, and the front of the label was all like credit up, because it had that white label that said Mega Man X that they put over the picture for some reason. But at any rate, it seemed to continue a story and it left a huge gap. Now, what was interesting about it was that the regular Mega Man line was still running on uh, Sega and on the NES. Meanwhile, this was being launched on the Super Nintendo and seemed vastly superior at the time. Um, and this is a great game. Mega Man X um, offered a lot of features that were to one extent or the other in the original Mega Man games. You had the Charge Blast, you had the Dash, and you had upgrades, but there was a lot of uh, innovation around it and maybe reimagining for the way some of it worked. Now, some questions between the two series are still left unanswered. What happened to the original Mega Man? How did Mega Man X come about? What happened to Dr. Light? What happened to Dr. Wily? What happened to anybody from the original series? And they sort of leave it open-ended. I don't even know if they address it in the uh, art comic series. But rather than letting the demo play out, I'm going to start this game up, and we're going to take a look at it. So as you can see, like other Mega Man games before it, there's a password mode to save your progress and there's a game start but we're just going to go with game start and we're going to try and play through as much as we can in this first uh, run through see how far we can get now some Mega Man games uh, start out with a level like this where before you get to the traditional menu option screen you have to play this sort of demo stage where you get used to the mechanics of the game not all of the games offer this sort of demo play and um, you know players that are really used to these 2D side scrollers will remember that most famously and perhaps most effectively of Super Mario Brothers that really teaches you from the get go how to play the game. But this game sort of throws you right into the action. You gotta fight all kinds of different uh, robots that are dropping hazards in front of you. You've got this refrigerator guy that shoots either missiles or electric shocks and really got to deal with it from the get-go. Now for me, this first level always harkens back to that epic, epic scene at the beginning of Mega Man 2 where you're climbing up the side of the building and they're telling the story of Mega Man 1 and you get to the top of the building, especially those uh, round sphere buildings in the background while you're walking on this what appears to be a highway. Always made me think of that. Now there are a number of factors actually in this game that make me think of Mega Man 2. Um, and I think maybe the idea of what was so successful in Mega Man 2 was really embodied in Mega Man X, as we'll see. Um, and that's what made it so successful. Because Mega Man 2 is arguably, certainly in my opinion, the best game in the original Mega Man franchise. I would say that this is probably the best game in the X franchise, so some people may disagree with me. Especially as it goes into the PlayStation, though I feel like it sort of got too bogged down with uh, anime cutscenes and things like that. There's just enough going on. Now I remember here, as we're jumping over these hazards, that these are like the highway that crack and these wasp guys. They really uh, make you think now. I haven't played this game in quite a while, but all the same, it still provides for a bit of a challenge. And I ain't got these guys that remind me of those power up guys that sound like snorting pigs in Doom. This is their face. We got this guy in the car, whatever his issue is. I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because I'm really used to having to dash, and I can't believe that just happened. Um, but I'll keep it in there for the sake of realism. Now, this game is not being emulated. I'm actually playing this 
on an actual Super Nintendo, which I have not done for many years. As a matter of fact, the most recent times I've played this game have been through emulation or through the port on my iPad. Uh, the port on the iPad is considerably different. So it does attempt to capture the general spirit of this game. I also remember playing demo for the PC version back in the day. It wasn't exactly the same as the SNES. This is the original SNES version. I'm playing it on an SNES with all standard issue controllers and things like that. Now, what really has me at a disadvantage, especially from having played later versions of this game, as I said before, is I don't have a dash. Uh, you start out all subsequent entries in this series with the dash, which is the first power-up that we'll get on uh, Chill Penguin's level. But I keep hitting the dash button and trying to do power jumps, and I find that uh, I can't. So that accounts for a bit of the blocky way I'm playing, in addition with me being distracted by talking. And here we've got Vile. And Vile shows up a lot of times in the series, specifically in this game. He's almost like a, a lesser arch nemesis for X and for Zero. Uh, he always kind of looks like Bulb Effect, Purple Bulb Effect to me. It's actually impossible to defeat him at this juncture in the game because we're going to be introduced to Zero and we're sort of set up with the idea that um, X is inferior to some of the other Reploids out there. And here comes Zero who was actually intended originally to be the star of this game. I remember uh, back when I was originally playing, I was like, oh, it's uh, Proto Man. So you've got your blue robot, and you've got your red robot, so you've got your X, and you've got your Zero, or you've got your Proto Man and Mega Man. I'm just going to sort of skip through some of the dialogue with uh, Zero counseling X. And we'll get our first little... Uh, code here that I'm not worried about, and little eddies, I don't know if they're called eddy or if that's just something I picked up from the cartoon, but we'll call them eddies. And we start here with Chill Penguin. And I remember when I first was playing this game, this was the first boss I beat. It's really the first boss that you're set up to beat, but hey. Not everybody follows the same steps, especially as you get better throughout the game. You really do get the sense that, sort of like in Mega Man 2, this game is designed for you to start anywhere, go anywhere if you're good enough. You can beat any of the bosses with the Mega Buster, or the X Buster. And you've got these guys that are similar to Batontons in the earlier X games, I believe they're both Batontons in the other Mega Man games. There's actually, on Armored... On Medillo's stage, there's a traditional one that you can keep killing and start stocking up on uh, one-ups or extra Mega Mans or whatever they are, Mega Man heads. But at this point in the game, they're not really there. Some of these jumps are pretty difficult without the, uh, the boost. They're not difficult in the sense that you can't make them, but difficult in the sense that when you're first playing it, it's hard to do. Let me get this dramatic scene with uh, Dr. Life. So you've come. And I get a lecture from Santa. He gave me the ability to choose my own path. But it seems that I could not choose a peaceful one because one of my hands is actually a gun. I'm destined to fight because my hand is a gun. I thought the world might need a new champion, so I built a robot. Program for championess. Step in the capsule and we're speed receive the speed boost. Now, as I was saying, the speed boost is the only uh, power up that sustains through all the games. It sort of becomes a staple that you can do with boost. Um, meanwhile, in other games, you go back to your basic blue setup at the beginning with the boost and your ability to charge. And those are really Mega Man's Mega Man X's standard. Abilities. But I always wondered, like, how many capsules do I build? Like, there's seven, eight Mega Man X games, and there's always capsule power ups in them. And I remember specifically in Mega Man X3, there were actually pink ones, which were optional, so, you know, how, how much fighting did he really expect? 
at least in the original Mega Man games, Dr. Light was not only alive, but he was actually actively building things in response, or so the stories would have you believe to what was going on. Now there's some extra stuff up here, but I don't have the weapons to get it. There's a uh, heart container, but I'll have to come back for that later, or at another time. Is this jerk that throws snowballs. Now I go through these doors, which are a, uh, a nice take on the standard Mega Man boss doors, which were just those lines that went up and down. And here we have our first boss fight with Chill Penguin. Pretty easy pattern. He goes up, you shoot him. He shoots at you, you shoot him. He tries to break his penguins. And then he's gonna throw his belly at you. Shoot him. Hit and miss, you climb up the wall like Ninja Gaiden. He throws some of those chunks at you. Don't hurt too much. Pretty easy, he explodes now. The first time I did this, I was jumping for jump. Oh my god, I beat Chill Penguin. Finally, I beat somebody. It had taken me some time, and especially back in the Blockbuster days, I only had the rental for three days at a time. So, you know, when you had three days and a learning curve and it was summer and you wanted to go outside, there was really a lot of stuff that you needed to get through in order to beat one of these guys. Especially when you're like eight, nine years old. Really busting your butt trying to do this. Actually, in 85, I was 11. So, maybe I just wasn't that skilled. But since then, I've defeated this game several times over. So here we've got our choices screen. I can make my choice, which is the one that I want to go to next. Um, with the ice power, I can go to Spark Mandrill. That happens to be this particular weakness. I can go to uh, Flame Mammoth's board, which is now all of the lava has been turned into rock because I've defeated Chill Penguin, and that's another nice feature of this game, depending on which bosses you beat, other areas of the game are affected to your benefit. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to go straight ahead to Flame Mammoth's board. Flame Mammoth. Fire Elephant. And Flame Mammoth. So I'm going to go over here to Flame Mammoth's board, and mostly so I can get that firepower, so I can go get that heart tank, and make my way around. Now I always thought it was cool that some of the other enemies are in this level of Sprat. We've got heads of fish from the uh, launch octopus stage, and we've got the uh, moving laser face shooting guys from the uh, beginning of the game. It was kind of cool that you get to see those guys going into Sprat. Now up here, I believe is the uh, weapons power up, but I can't go in there at the moment. I don't have the helmet power up. So we got these pickaxe guys. I'm just gonna sort of slide under them through the uh, now rock lava to get that heat. And there's also a energy tank on this level that I can't get also because I don't have the helmet power up that breaks the bricks. Sort of skip through that area. I'll come back later. I'll go back to this guy. Now, this board always reminded me of Metal Man stage in Mega Man 2, possibly because of the conveyor belts and uh, the things dropping down. But like I said, I always saw a lot of parallels, specifically between this game and Mega Man 2. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that was purposeful or not, but this is like uh, what did I call the the Shooter Joes or whatever they were, the guy with the, uh, the 
gun and the shield that resembled Proto Man to a certain extent. We saw a lot of him in the Dr. Wily stages. Uh, I think particularly on Wily 1, you have to use weapon 3 to climb up. So that's what he always reminded me about. Now, the particular weakness for Flame Mammoth is the wind attack, which you would get from Storm Eagle. That's his name, like Wing Bird, but Storm Eagle. Uh, I don't have it. Just kill him with my regular attack. So he hits the ground, it shakes, and you fall, or he shoots these flames out, or globs of oil, and lights them on fire. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Not. I always like that he like made this elephant victory noise, like he did something. jump when he jumps and you time it so that you're landing after he lands so that he doesn't knock him on your butt. And he's pretty easy. There we go, we got the bigger belt on fire. He shot me. Get him before he gets me. He did. And he explodes. So now I'm gonna have a little fire attack. I got my ice attack. And the world So now before I go on to any other stage, now before I go on to any other stage, I'm going to go back to Chill Penguin, and I'm going to go get that extra heart. So the thing that was really cool about this game was that there were power-ups everywhere, not just the capsules. You had four E-tanks, and you had a number of uh, hearts that extended your actual life bar, so they could be, by the end of the game, as large as one of the enemy meters. So that was the difference between the original Mega Man game and where you started out with a particular amount of life and that's the amount of life you had. And you may have had some extra energy, whatever, that you could acquire with like E-Tanks. But you really had what you had. And this you get to build up your entire... your entire uh, stats. Which was fun because it added a lot of extra secrets, a lot of unplayable factor to the game. There's even uh, a secret capsule that you can get in the game where uh, Dr. Light is dressed up as Ryu from Street Fighter and you can do a little Hadouken. And the Hadouken is really powerful. Uh, in this particular go through of the game, I won't be getting that because it's a real pain in the ass to do. But it is there. Um, it's on Armored Armadillo stage. I've done it a couple of times. It's really not worth the trouble to just be able to shoot the Hadouken, except for in later stages when you have to fight all the bosses again. I think you just need to hit them with one or two um, Hadoukens, and there you go. Get defeated. But if you have to uh, throw a weapon that defeats them, you're in pretty good shape. So now all you need to do is you have this uh, little walking suit. You launch yourself. Ah, not so easy, is it? So you and you do a jump and then you do a up jump. Jump and up jump. And you climb up here. You got your fire. You blow it up. There's your heart tank. There you go. You got another one. You charge your life. And you go and you use your escape U or escape unit or whatever, whatever little thing they put in there to let you leave. It's a start select option going back to Super Mario World. And you get your code. And. That's it. So, for now, we're going to stop this video. Make sure to check in on our next video on Mega Man X, where we will be fighting against uh, Spark Mandrel, and we will be taking on Armored Armadillo. Thanks for 